Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this week's case of the week, and I want to talk about immediate implant placement, and in particular, immediate implant placement with the Han implant. Uh, and the reason for that is Dr. Jack Hahn is uh, one of my mentors and uh, one of uh, our grand poobas in uh, implant dentistry. He has designed this implant and the thread pattern to provide us with immediate placement stability when we place the implant. So that's going to be one of our requirements for the immediate implant uh, or emergency implant placement. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, case of the week. For this week, I actually have two cases that I want to share with you, and uh, they are both similar scenarios where the patient comes in with a failing tooth. Um, in these scenarios, they're both anterior teeth. Uh, for the first case, it's tooth number seven, and as you can see here, uh, the patient has had a lot of work done on this tooth. There's a short root. The patient has undergone root canal therapy and a, and a crown. So the crown has lasted a while, but now we're starting to get a little bit of recurrent decay underneath the uh, existing restoration. So it was time for us to actually remove uh, this tooth. So what I want to uh, present to you is uh, essentially the protocol for placing an immediate implant and when to do it and when not to do it. So in this situation, uh, I'll go ahead and remove the tooth as atraumatically as possible. The first requirement for me is whether I was able to extract the tooth atraumatically or not. Uh, and whether I need to place any bone graft and uh, just wait and bring the patient back, or can I go ahead and place the implant? Now in this situation, what I did was I wanted to open a flap because when I extracted the tooth, I took my periodontal probe and I probed the buckle wall and buckle shelf and I realized that there was a little bit of a defect there. So uh, the reason why we open a flap is to visualize the bone. And I really wanted to do a papilla sparing flap where I don't go all the way to the adjacent teeth uh, and I give the papilla a chance to remain where they are and I won't have the recession uh, after the uh, flap. And the second requirement for me when I'm placing an immediate implant is uh, whether I can get primary stability with my implant. So in order to do that, I go ahead and drill into the uh, palatal wall and uh, I want to make sure that I have uh, what we call a, a purchase point where we can go ahead and create our osteotomy and essentially create an area where the implant uh, can be received by the bone and there will be enough bone to uh, be able to hold on to uh, the implant. So in this situation, my osteotomy is completed and I'll go ahead and place the implant. And here you can see that the implant is in place and uh, you have some of the threads showing. The bone level, uh, mesiodistally, interproximally is gonna be held up by the adjacent teeth, so I'm not worried about that. I'm utilizing some uh, BioOS bone graft material, it's a xenograft. I'll go ahead and place the BioOS in the buccal area and also covering the uh, implant itself. Obviously, it's not going to uh, bond to the, uh, to, the, to the top of the implant, the polished titanium healing abutment, and uh, there's a situation uh, right before I suture the grafted site. And what I'm utilizing here is uh, essentially it's a horizontal uh, suture. However, it's a little bit modified and it helps pull the tissue more coronally. And uh, I try to create a primary closure as much as possible. In this scenario, I uh, placed uh, one horizontal mattress suture uh, and interrupted sutures down the sides of the incision where I had my vertical releasing areas. And then, uh, obviously we want to send the patient home, but uh, we want the patient to have a tooth there, and the patient wants to have a tooth there, so we went ahead and fabricated a removable interim restoration. This is a interim partial, and you don't want the, uh, the tissue surface to be in touch with your partial, so what I usually do is I'll go ahead and check the intaglio surface, and I'll make the adjustments. So now the patient goes through a period of healing, uh, usually about three to four months before I uncover the implant and place a healing abutment. The healing abutment is usually in place for several weeks before I can go ahead and uh, fabricate a temporary and start uh, the process of tissue contouring before we fabricate the final restoration. So the second case is very similar to the first case, except the patient uh, came in with tooth number eight, obviously a lateral periodontal lesion in this situation. And again, it's a challenge because you have to ask yourself, can I extract this tooth atraumatically? 
in this situation, can I extract and remove the lateral periodontal cyst and have an area where I can go ahead and place the implant? So again, uh, very gently working around the tooth, I'll go ahead and try to get a little bit of mobility uh, with my periotomes. And then I'll take my time with my forceps and I'll make sure to uh, extract the tooth as atraumatically as possible. In this situation, just like the last, the uh, crown is removed and now I have a little bit more access uh, to the tooth and I'll go ahead and extract the tooth. So once the tooth is uh, extracted, I'll do the same thing as I did for the last case where I'll take my periodontal probe and I'll make sure that I have an intact buccal plate. Uh, if I don't, I'll open a flap so I can visualize it and I'll be able to graft it. If I do have my buccal shelf, I'll go ahead and proceed to the next step, which is to create that purchase point on the palatal. So here you see the tooth is ex extracted atraumatically, and uh, I'll go ahead and clean out the area and uh, remove the cyst and curette the socket as much as possible to have a nice uh, clean socket to be able to place the implant. And as you can see here, uh, we were able to remove the, uh, the, the lateral periodontal cyst. And here you see that I'm probing the buccal shelf and I have about three millimeters apical to my uh, mucogingival junction to play around with and uh, place the implant. So again, same thing, I'm going to utilize the, uh, the palatal shelf uh, in order to create that primary stability for my implant. And uh, I'll go ahead and proceed with the steps to create the osteotomy for the implant. Now the question is, if I create the osteotomy and I want to go ahead and place the implant, what if I don't have primary stability, do I still place the implant? For me, I feel more comfortable if I cannot create primary stability to uh, just graft the area and come back at a future date. So that is determined at the time of implant placement as I'm doing here. I'll go ahead and place the implant and uh, I'll double check my primary stability and make sure that I maintain that before placing bone graft and, uh, and suturing. So in this situation, I'll go ahead and get to the correct depth and I'll check my primary stability. Uh, I have about 25 uh, Newton centimeters, so it's uh, really borderline. I'm definitely not gonna load this implant, but in theory, I can go ahead and uh, graft around it and wait and let the implant osteointegrate and come back later and create the uh, temporary for the patient. So here's an x-ray of the uh, implant in place. And there are certain requirements that I look for in terms of uh, how much stability I have and how much, uh, how much primary stability I have at the apical end of the, of the implant when I'm placing it. Uh, in this situation, I'm using a allograft. Uh, it's called uh, Regeneros by Biomet. And once the allograft is uh, in place, I'll go ahead and place the suture and deliver the uh, the temporary for the patient. So again, I'll go ahead and create my horizontal mattress, but it is uh, a modified horizontal mattress in order to create a, uh, a better seal and uh, as, as close to a primary closure as possible. Obviously, this is an extraction socket, so at the center of the ridge, you're not going to create that primary closure, but uh, the closer you can get to it, the better, obviously, for the healing. And then once uh, I have my suture in place, I'll go ahead and place the uh, interim partial for the patient. Uh, and again, checking the intaglio surface so that it is not touching the grafted area. So uh, that's our uh, case of the week, and I hope you enjoyed it.